if I don't lose it in the water today. <laughs> this is the bit you don't see. Day. I'm at the ye old Robin Hood in Ironbridge and I've just been in and you can park here for free you don't even have to go and buy a pint but I will not a pint probably a bottle not a bottle a glass of wine <laughs> and you can stop here overnight for free on their car park and go and look around Ironbridge I'm going to the camper mart tomorrow um, but I wanted to check out Ironbridge um, today okay so I'm just gonna get sorted and go for a little wander there's the pub. Just before you hit the roundabout at Ironbridge, you come down the hill, turn left. There's a little uh, path, you'll see, going down to the river. I decided to take that because it's more scenic and apparently you can see the bridge from below so I'm gonna try and get the drone up if I feel confident enough I'm still very nervous using this drone I want to get great shots even though someone's bought it for me you know it's a huge amount of money and I, I want to do it justice you know <laughs> so um, bear with me guys it will get better <laughs> as I build my confidence <laughs> if I don't lose it in the water today. <laughs> Carl Brookdale Company Ironmaster Abraham Darby III was commissioned to cast and build this bridge. It was the first arch bridge in the world to be cast of iron, a material which previously was too expensive to use for large structures. Being the first of its sort, the construction had no precedent. The method chosen to create the structure was therefore based on carpentry. Each piece of the frame was cast separately and fastenings replicated those used in woodworking, such as the mortise, tenon and blind dovetail joints. The bridge was raised in the summer of 1779 and opened on New Year's Day 1781. So this is the table of tolls and uh, for every time you pass over this bridge for every coach blah de blah de blah but then it says ditto by four ditto by two <laughs> same as so, so ditto is a word it's not just a slang for every foot passenger half a shilling i'm guessing huh? that's cool this is the uh, toll cottage that the queen herself opened in 2003 Welcome to the toll house, the old uh, stove. This house is where the toll or fee was collected from those who wanted to cross the bridge. Mm. The toll keeper and his family lived here, but they had to be able to take tolls at any time, day or night. If you want to make a day of it, there's a number of walks here you can go on, um, just lasting a couple of hours. There's lots of coffee shops you know um, local businesses to support and it'd be a nice day out I do imagine that in summer it will be heaving so I think this is a perfect day for it because it's dry um, but not too busy so it's lovely it's a shame Dave's not here he'd absolutely love this because it's old and he likes all things old and historic that's why he's married to me <laughs> It's a lovely little walk around Ironbridge. Sorry about the road noise. The houses are beautiful, really old, you know, English architecture. 
architecture, all different. I think Dave would be nice and busy here with his handyman business. Um, they seem to be very welcoming, so the pub where I'm at was like, yeah, park up. I've just seen another pub with a sign outside saying, you know, if you need to use the toilet, yes, you can. If you want to bring dogs in, yes, you can. So, so far, I'd say a very welcoming place. So I'd definitely come and visit if you're down this way. Uh, down this way. building during a flood event in February 2022. Oh my goodness. Wow. believe that the floodwaters came this high. I was just chatting to the lady and she said that a lot of the locals they just can't get insurance anymore um, and they do our flood defences all along and in 2022 it was within centimetres of the top of the defences should we were all up all night worried you know so it, it's beautiful and picturesque now um, but I'm not sure I'd want to live here. I'd be worried about getting flooded. <laughs> So I just stopped at the, oh, the granary, I think it was called. Um, for some chips, just for a snack. And a glass of wine, but oh, don't drink in the day normally. I feel a bit half cut, so I think I'm gonna go back to the van and have a rest. <laughs> There's now quite a lot of camper vans on this car park. And the roundabout is here. And I'm just wondering about driving down to the end of the road to see if I can park near the kilns there. It just seems a little bit more quiet, really. Um, so do I do it, do I not? I feel pretty safe here, so I think I'll be fine there. I'll just be able to, uh, it'll just be a bit more peaceful, I guess. I'm gonna do it, okay. Hoping this road quietens down. So just a quick thing to note, because I'm wild camping, I'm going to turn this seat, but I'm going to make sure that the mats are completely flat here, so that if I needed to drive off, I could. So I just went and chatted with a lady that's in her camper van down there, and she's going to the camper mart tomorrow, and she stayed here before, so she says it's um, safe enough to stay here, and it's nice to know someone else is going to be nearby but I'm not far from the Robin Hood pub and I could stay there it's just a bit jump at the car park so and uh, you know once you're snuggled in I don't necessarily need a pub to be honest I've got a bottle of wine <laughs> anyway there we go time to relax <laughs> Ironbridge, I'd definitely come to Ironbridge, definitely worth a look, easy places to park, lots of little boutique shops, nice walks, you know, a little bit of something for everyone. And I think there's quite a number of museums that you can visit um, regarding that kind of thing, you know, like iron and uh, what would be the word? There's lots of museums regarding the industry that was around when the bridge was built. So you can go and visit them all. Not all of them are free. There was only two that were free and the rest you have to pay for. So um, 
you know, but there's plenty to see without spending any money. So, right, enjoy my evening. <laughs> bit you don't see. All the stuff piled there while well, I sort the bed out. I need to get the mattress from there, put it down here and then make the bed up. So my bed is made up, I've got a telly, I've got this is my little power bank which is great for charging the uh, laptop because my inverter doesn't quite do it yet. I've got a kettle ready to go for morning, hot water bottle if I get cold. My front driver's seat is completely clear, if I need to I can take down the window inserts and just drive off. I'm obviously going to pull the pop top down so that if I needed to drive off I could. And uh, there's my clothes under here for morning. There you go. I don't want to go to bed yet. I just, oh, hang on. I don't want to go to bed yet. I just want to chill out. So I'm just going to watch some telly, I might do some editing, I might read a book, but I don't want a late night because I want to be up early for Camp Mart. And I've got a time slot of nine o'clock, so we'll see. I don't think I'll be there for that. <laughs> um, but I'm going home tomorrow, so I don't want to be uh, too late. Anyway, until then.